Howdy y'all, I'm Zach Carell. I'm the host of the Yak Legion podcast and the Buckeye Kayak Fishing podcast. And I'm here today with the Fry Brothers. We got Trevor and Travis Fry. So uh, I know you've all heard of Trevor from the spring fling last year. He caught a, uh, a 10 pound bass. Um, came in at, uh, uh, what, 25 inches? 25 and a quarter. Yeah. 25 and a quarter, man. That was a big old bass. Yes, yeah, biggest one I have ever caught. Or seen in Ohio. Yeah, there. You know that's a once a lifetime fish, really in Ohio for a lot of anglers in this state. Um, a lot of people fish for years and years and years and not even come to anything close to that, man. So congratulations on yep, that. Good thanks, job. Appreciate it. Good job, man. Uh, so how's your summer been? You guys been doing any fishing or? I've been chasing the wipers a lot. Yeah. Uh, mostly down there on the Ohio River uh, and always chasing smallmouth. They're, they're. I think both of our main species is definitely smallmouth. I've, I've actually switched a lot over to uh, targeting muskie, failing at targeting muskie yeah. for the most part, and uh, largemouth this year. I wow. had a 20, yeah. 25 inch PB this spring, yeah. and I just hours and hours and hours of throwing giant baits to try oh, to yeah. get to try to get that. 25 and a quarter or 25 and a half inch. <laughs> yeah, you throw a lot of big swim, uh, swim, um, swim baits. Look, I can't talk tonight. These little jointed swim baits. Let me find them up. something's got better view, better on the video here. Look at that big bluegill swim bait, man. These things are awesome looking. And you said you paint some of these. Yeah, I pretty much paint every bait that I throw anymore. Uh, I don't have very many store bought loaders. I just buy them blank, like. So this bluegill was transparent to begin with, and you just put like a couple hours into it and layer upon layer upon layer of paint. I, I've been doing it for about five years, and for the most part, the patterns only get better. Oh, wow. Wow, man. That's interesting. So where do you guys uh, go to buy these big freaking jointed swim baits here? So most of them recently have been getting from backwater.com. Uh, and I also use Cedar Run Outdoors and Dinger Baits. And uh, really, each site has its advantages. Because, like, they're all mass produced. It's just like every other bait. They're all mass produced. But with these, you have to tune them. And I don't know, a lot of people aren't pumped about that. Mm. And then some of them, you just have to experiment with them. Because some of them are made with a better quality than others. So, like, you can buy two 1.5 square bills. And one of them will just float really fast and it'll sit there and blow out if you go too quick. And then yeah. the other one that's like basically a Lucky Craft 1.5 blank swims like champ and can just plow through the current like it's nobody's business. Wow, man. So uh, didn't you catch a big 10-pound fish this year? Big green fish? Yep. What one did you catch him on? So I got that on this. Uh, wow. Trevor and I were talking about why I like why I had, why we had spent what the past three years something like that of chasing big bass and I think it was about three years ago we had basically decided like we're gonna catch ten pounders in Ohio yep. and uh, get his on the jig and I have I've been following everything swimbait related that I can I'm constantly on swimbait universe I'm constantly watching tactical bass and uh, they had mentioned bright colored baits, and I had been throwing nothing but natural patterns in the spring. And uh, what was that five hours that day of me not catching a single fish? Oh, yeah, wow. I actually, that was one of the times I had given up finally throwing big baits. I had one on my rod, but I was like, I I didn't put the grind work in. I, I gave up. I was catching them like little piddly fish. And mm -hmm. I think we were, we were like headed back to the... We were, we were done. We were done fishing. He's like, ah, a couple more cats. And we had actually already went through that area hours before and fished it. And then when he, we were leaving, coming back through, he just, made just that, hammered it. Made that, <laughs> yeah. that dumb comment. I was just like, I'm just looking for one big aggressive bass. <laughs> Launched it out there and like you saw the wave almost as soon as it hit the water. Oh, yeah. And then me being excited, I just set the hook and yelled, like, just one big aggressive bass. Yeah, That's it, was, awesome. it was a huge fish. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it a lake or a pond or uh it's technically a lake right 
It's a body of water. It's, it's a body of water. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Want to keep your secrets then? Yeah. Uh, what kind of structure do you normally fish, um, um, and how do you fish these swim baits? All right. So I don't know how you fish yours in particular because I've been I've been switching a lot to ponds. So. Well, for mine, like uh, I fish the river more frequently than he does since I'm down here, you know, in your area. So. For like ripples, something real fast, I'll mm -hmm. throw these like boy ducket type swim baits, the multi-jointed ones that like feel that it's a, a good bit heavier just in general for its size mm -hmm. and it runs really fast really well. So in summertime when smallmouth are in those really fast deep ripples, I'll throw stuff like that and they just come through the current so well and you know they sustain their pattern uh, as they're raging through that you know quick water. And whereas like other baits, like this trout glider, not it doesn't do so hot in the current. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can kind of jerk bait it around, but it's not gonna carry that true pattern. So I'll, I'll throw stuff like that. I like I like throwing paddle tails. I mean, just mm -hmm. as much as anybody else, drift fishing paddle tails on. You know, every, everybody likes to fine tune their uh, their jig heads to a pretty certain weight. So. They're, they're not the ones you see everybody with, like Big Joshies, mm -hmm. you know, the 3.75 inch, 3.5 inch, 4 inch swim baits. We go quite a bit bigger. Cause oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I throw a lot of Big Joshies, and these things are huge compared to those. <laughs> but then you have those fishing trips where you, a lot of times you, don't go, you guys go to catch nothing, right? It does happen. I, yeah. I usually get at least one, but yeah, I, yeah. I fish mine in a very particular way anymore. Because mm -hmm. I do a... Most of the places I go, if I take the kayak, it's like you're dedicating to a half-mile kayak drag. Uh, which with wheels, it helps, but you're still hopping trees and going through mud. Yeah. So if I don't want to do that, I just bring my swim bait rod, and I'm just working on my ground game. And it's, I just call them the high percentage areas. You do like one to five casts around the high percentage areas, and then you move on. Because if they're going to follow it, you you know they're there. If they don't follow it, they either hammer it or they're not interested. And, mm -hmm. you, and I don't really worry about like. So this this trout glider is two and a half ounces. Uh, I get on that bait in particular. I get more impact bites than I do halfway through my retreat. Like as soon as it hits the water, a fish smashes it. Wow. When I first started, I always thought, you know, this is gonna scare the fish. But now I'm a true believer, and if it scares the fish, that thing wasn't going to eat it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it's good theory. It's even with our, like, that's my average size swim bait, the paddle tail anyway, that I'll throw in, in the rivers around here. Well, that thing's huge. Right, yeah. You know, big baits, they catch big fish. Yeah. <laughs> and we do, we downsize every now and then, but we've just gotten a bit addicted to throwing the big stuff. Especially when we can get away with it, like coming up next month, yeah. October, big baits all Game on. all month. <laughs> that's that's all we're going to be doing, and we stick to the usually the single jointed stuff. I mean, I do. Uh, I'm getting away from it. Really? Uh, yeah, October. I start running this. So this is uh, this one I cut my big bass on. Ouch! Just let's try. Our hooks are sharp, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is a very versatile bait, and like if you don't want to paint your own, you can get them on eBay for like. 10 bucks with, yeah. uh, with the bait wrap on it. So it's a slow sink, but if you reel it fast, you can use it as a subsurface, like a weight bait. Yeah. If you reel it slow and just let it sink down, it's just all jointed action. Uh, you can also run it as a jerk bait. And there was a time last year I went to one of the ponds we grew up fishing. I threw Texas rigs, uh, topwater walkers, whopper ploppers, I was throwing jerk baits. I was like, I don't know what to do. I threw that on in a black and white pattern. I tried waking it on a couple casts. It's like, I wonder if they'll hit this as a jerk bait. Got like 15 fish on that the one day. Wow. I didn't want anything small. They just are hammering that. And we catch all shapes and sizes just like anybody else. I mean, I've caught plenty of six inch bass on six inch swim baits. Like yeah. They're, yeah. They're way over, overly aggressive. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I think bass just strike at stuff to kill it. Yep. Or Not necessarily trying to eat it. Mm -hmm. Because I've caught 
12 inch bass on the 10 inch worm yeah. you know these worms look like they're snakes in the water mm -hmm. you don't know that what that bass is gonna slurp it up like spaghetti or is he just trying to um scare it off i don't know it's pretty interesting i definitely think there is a an aggression level mm -hmm. at that like it's just like what are you doing in my area and it comes up and with those i mean i just poke myself with that every time i mess with those baits hooks are so sharp mm -hmm. you know i poke myself so if they come up and they try to just smack it yeah you get them. They just, yeah, they just tag them. They are predator fish, and they're territorial. So anything that moves into their territory, they're you know it, it t ticks them off, and they're liable to bite at it. So um, we're just a lot of the time we're of the opinion that we've kind of adopted from other YouTubers that these things they make such a commotion that they'll they have that draw power where fish will come from you know, eight, nine, ten feet away sometimes, mm -hmm. especially if they can see it, like that, the nuclear trout pattern Travis made up and painted up. That, uh, I mean, even in muddy water, they can see that. Even if the visibility is two feet, they can see it for three, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of brightness that they really do have extra draw compared to, like, throwing something like a little paddle tail. Now, I've done good on uh, swim baits before, but about half the size of these things, really. Yeah. We'll have to convert you over. It's a... It's a game changer. Yeah, I was, well, you guys are definitely catching some big fish, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, now, you're, you're a big fish. You caught and you won the spring fling last year, the Buckeye yep. Kayak Fishing Trail spring fling. Uh, you're a 10-pounder, man. That was a huge bass. Now, you didn't use one of these big suckers. You used this little teeny tiny jig right here. <laughs> yes, I, I did use a little guy for that. It was... Um, so... Travis was talking about high percentage areas, so I came in and um, he he commits hard. I'm I'm harder to convince than he he is. So like, I got I got a milk crate, not anything, not like a yak attack or anything. Like literally just a old milk crate and I zip tied PVC pipe to it. Yeah. I got six rods with me when during the tournaments. So I went in with my big bait. It was it was one really similar to this bluegill. They're right behind me. It wasn't quite as pretty as this one, but. So I go in, I chuck that three times, check it, check and see if there was a big bass in there. And then I started working that lower water column and that, that bass hit at like 17 feet, 18 feet, uh, right, right on the, just the base of this giant pile of wood. And I, I wasn't even, uh, wasn't even close to getting him drawn in cause I was using a surface swim bait. So I yeah. did, I went in first with the big guy and but that was my follow-up lure and tagged him on it and it, i actually thought i had a hold of a channel cat for a pretty long time yeah because <laughs> I, I was just like there's no way this is a bass it was just yeah, too big just too big <laughs> so what'd you have uh what exactly what jig is this uh, it's a custom made one and oh, i couldn't okay. even tell you the name i got it at the columbus fishing expo i got gotcha. you um some guy from michigan he's he's always up there you can you can definitely find him up there uh what did you trailer it with I believe I had a Yamamoto swim bait on the back of that at the time, and it was it was very close to the same color that black and uh, black sort of and a green and pumpkin green. and green, black and green, yeah, sort of a green pumpkin green. Yeah, it was a pretty exciting too. That was my first online tournament too, so that was all pretty. Yeah. Neat. I haven't seen you in too many tournaments since then, man. Yeah, I, I started tree service. Oh well, yeah. It's a it's a little less like gambling and a lot more like making money. Yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, a little less time away from home. That that month long tournament, man, yeah. I was fishing every day. I'd call off wow. work to go fishing. I would get off work, go fishing, weekends fishing, and mm -hmm. it just became a lot. Offer that you know just one tournament where I could. I'm, I'm trying to get back into it next year, but I mean, everybody, that's a high level competition. All you guys run around with Hobies and, <laughs> 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 you know, these giant fish finders and like that whole spring fling, I didn't have a fish finder and I, I, I paddle my boat around and it, it makes a difference. I'm, yeah. I can't, I can't lie. I'm a little jealous of the, anybody with a pedal drive. Cause you know, you guys keep your hands on your rod and reel all the yeah. time. It, they make a difference, man. They make a difference. And, yes. Uh, they're effortless. You know, you can pedal something easier than you can paddle. So okay. you're using less energy. Well, you're, you're getting more cast in per trip because you, yeah. you're holding your rod more. Yeah. I mean, that's 
fish fish come down to percentages, man. Like mm-hmm. when you break everything down, but I'm That's pretty I'm pretty committed to that boat for now. That. It's what is that exactly? He's got it it's hanging a, up on the roof of his uh, garage here. Yeah, it's a Old Town Predator MX. So it's it's a 12 foot, 84 pounds, 36 yeah, yeah. inches wide, and I can run from the front to the back of that. It's still not, to, you know, it's not Hobie stability by any yeah. means. But and I'm I'm I'm, I'm curious, man. I I kind of want to race a Hobie just to see if I can <laughs> out, out paddle somebody. Now the PAs, they're they're kind of bulky, they're kind of slow, especially like a big sure. guy and myself on it. But uh, man, the Outbacks would be something you'd want to race because those Outbacks are pretty fast. Yeah, and the Compass too. Um, see, I know those would smoke me though. Like those those, I want to see at the pro anglers because I'm not interested in fishing out of a, yeah. a Compass or. A, I, you know, I want a pro angler because yeah. all the fancy stuff, all the sea. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably never be able to afford one. But. They're like a bass boat, a miniature bass yes. boat and a kayak. you got so many storage options, and uh, they're big enough for me to move around in, stand up in, and mm-hmm. the, I really enjoy mine. Yeah, as uh, soon as somebody puts a, a, a nice, just screaming little jet motor on, I'll, mm-hmm. then I'll invest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll be into it then. You can get a Torquedo for one, or a lot of people, Jimmy, um, just trolling motors on them. Yeah, I got my, my rigs right behind you. I don't know if you've seen that video. But yeah, I saw that video you had, like, uh, what, last year or the year before? Yeah. You are out of East Fork a whole bunch of that trolling motor, weren't you? Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure it out. But yeah. Man, I ended up putting a screen door spring on this side and just a rope on this side, and it is, I got a cleat that locks everything in. Yeah. And I, okay, so I tie this thing in my toe, right? And I can steer with my foot and move around and cast at the same time. So I, you know, I obviously don't get to do that in tournaments. But when I'm just fishing for myself, it's, it's a pretty good time. You could use trolling motors in tournaments. Some of them you can. Um, the most of the big ones around here, you can. Oh, really? Because I see in the Buckeye Trail, uh, any of the KBF events. Uh, uh, Mayo. I mean, I think most of them they let you do motors. You just see torpedoes and people trolling motors out there on the water with them. Really, I was unaware of that. Uh, so yeah, you could do tournaments with motors. Man, they approved all kinds of stuff. They got that blue sky and the uh, subcat. They're going to be approving pond pros before too long. You know, mm-hmm. those little Coleman crawdad type boats with the trolling <laughs> motor. It's uh, just going to be a free for all. There's going to be somebody's going to be going 70 mile an hour on a bass boat, and I'm going to be going yeah. 5.5. <laughs> in my, in my kayak. Everything made of plastic, it seems like, is a uh, is counted as a kayak anymore. But uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. Um, some of them boats get disabled people out on the water, and that's kind of neat. But uh, so, uh, what about this other kayak you got hanging up? What is that exactly? That's a that's a fast boat. I'll, I'll race any any boat in that thing. That, that's the fastest boat I've ever touched. That's a Pungo 120. It's my girlfriend's boat. I bought her. I bought her at um, not that long ago. And man, I cannot get anywhere. Cl- She's paddling effortless, effortlessly yeah. in that thing, and I'm paddling as hard as I possibly can to just keep up with her like normal cadence. Wow. And yeah, it, it flies. I. I I haven't gotten a hold of it yet because I just I beat the tar out of my boats, so take them in shallow water and <laughs> slide them down banks and drag them miles through the woods and I take take them everywhere. So I try not to touch that one. It's more of a recreation. It, I got it so we could do multi day trips and she could come along with me and have yeah. enough room to keep all the all the camping stuff in there because there's there's so much to fish down here and you know, oh, so yeah. many pretty rivers down in Kentucky. They're just awesome, you know, for camping trips. And, oh, definitely. I know. I need to get down to Kentucky. Yeah. 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 I got a co-worker um, at work, and he he fishes at a Kentucky uh, bass club. He's um, a bass boat guy. Man, you should see some of the bass he shows me. They go down to Cave Run. They fish the Ohio River. They fish Kincaid Lake, um, the Green River. Uh, They do all kinds of tournaments all over, man. That Green River is the one I keep telling you about that I want to get down to. And have you fished? Laurel River Lake. No, I keep hearing about winter smallmouth in Laurel River Lake. No, I and I I gotta go down there this winter. But I, several people have told me it's it's nothing to catch five pound smallmouth like mid January down there. Now I know Lake Saint Clair, man. 
you talk about some big smallmouth bass. Yeah. Uh, they, I mean, there was they did a Hobie Bass Open up there on Lake St. Clair this year, and you should see the smallmouth they pulled out of there, man. Mm. Just giants, man, giant fish. Uh, Kurt Smith, he could tell you some stories about some giant smallmouth coming out of that lake, man. It's it's really incredible. That guy, yeah, he's all over the place. I'm always seeing him in every <laughs> tournament. I, yeah. I know he was in like every one I was in. I remember seeing his, yeah. you know, always at the top of the list. Yeah. He fishes a lot of small tournaments, a lot of big tournaments. Yeah. Um, he is a 2017 national champ, KBF yeah. national champ. Um, so that was a big accomplishment. Uh, I mean, he's a very accomplished angler. He's been on Yak Legion several times. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a recurring host. I don't know who's been on there more, him or John Graves. <laughs> Speaking of John Graves, me and him are going up to Gunnersville this week. We're leaving Monday, Wednesday afternoon. Uh, we're going to head up there. He's fishing the Hobie Bass Open in Gunnersville. And um, uh, I'm just going up there to fish and interview people and, you know, take some videos, have a, have a good time, you know. And, I want to catch some of them southern bats, man. I really do. Them big bucket mouths. I've been watching videos <laughs> on YouTube and uh, searching the internet, and there's some big bass at that lake. So I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm like a little little boy waiting for Christmas, man. <laughs> it's awesome. Got to bring down some bait. Oh bring yeah. Wide bait. Well, I heard they're catching them down there in the grass with swim baits, and I'm almost. Uh, Thinking about getting some one of these big swim baits to take it down there with me. Um, see what, how I do. I got I got a beat up one that's got a lot of fish. I can cut off my rod right now. Yeah. You just have it. Well, I'll take it down there. If I catch yeah. any fish, I'll send you some videos and tag you in it. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, that he should, he should sell them. And he does it. He just gets them away. <laughs> that's a hobby. Yeah, I'm real bad about that. I should probably sell them, but I just give them away. I give them, I give them to kids all the time when I'm fishing at like yeah. the local dam. Oh wow. I target saw guy real hard all year and if I'm catching him on a crankbait that I painted and like, I see a little kid just eyeballing me, if he's, if he's brave enough to walk over and ask me what I'm catching him on, I'll just give him a crankbait and be like, here, try this. When you, yeah. when you feel it smash the bottom, pause and then start reeling again. And uh, every once in a while they catch fish and then hmm. the rest of the time they just kind of lose them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's real snaggy where I fish. Probably one of the snaggiest. I don't know. What do you think, Will's Creek? One of the snaggiest bodies of water. Yeah, I mean chunk it's just it's, it's chunk rock, but it's not like big chunk rock, mm -hmm. and and it just eats eats lures, it just eats them. Yeah. Wow, man. What's your uh, what's your plan with the southern bass? Are you going in with uh, your big worm. Your yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to throw big worms, swim baits. I uh, heard Gunnersville is a good frog lake, so I'm going to throw some frogs, probably the whopper plopper in the morning. Um, throw some jigs. A uh, co worker of mine says he goes to Gunnersville about every couple of years. and They go down there at Goat Island and uh, fish those rock ledges to go into the water. And uh, he throws, um, he's a real big fan of those uh, Bitsy Bug Strike King jigs. Really? And uh, he buys them in bulk. I mean, he buys them hundreds of them at a time. And so they're cheap enough. I guess his logic, they're cheap enough to if you lose them or if they get too old and the hooks rust on them, you know, it ain't no thing just to throw it away and use a new one. Um, I've caught a lot of those. Have you? They, they used to be like my smallmouth finesse. Yeah. You just put a little, little rage crawl trailer on there, just jig it around, and, and it's like it's smashed. Oh, yeah. So small, you can put them anywhere. Like, makes sense. I don't think I can buy them in bulk, though. Yeah, he buys <laughs> he buys hundreds of them. But man, he 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 says everybody in his club fishes with those, and they all catch big bass. He shows me the pictures, so I know that they are an effective bait. And he's got me using them, and I've caught a lot of bass on them. Um, I, I yeah, I was real happy with them. I like the black and the blue, and then the uh, the um, green pumpkin. Is my uh, one of my favorite ones, and then I'll um, I'll uh, use a trailer, and I'll usually put like a um, a big Joshy crawl or just a big Joshy swim bait. Those are really neat trailers. I, I I've only had one pack of them, and mm -hmm. I, but every time I've gone out with them, I've, I've caught fish. Like the paddle tail and, yeah. the, and the, the claws on them. Yeah, those are. It's a cool concept they got going on there. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty particular to just keeping the paddle tails on the back of jigs, but that, that's pretty neat. Now, man, I remember the first time I threw a big joshy, 
and I was it was fishing clear water, and it looked like a minnow swimming, like reeling that sucker in. I mean, it looked like just a little minnow swimming through the water, and that's what sold me on them. Yeah. And I've caught a lot of bass on them over the years from farm ponds, the rivers, the lakes. I mean, everywhere. Yeah. Um, I use like their little crawls, their um, big Joshy swim crawls. And they're just so lifelike looking, man. They just glide mm -hmm. through the water and swim like a fish would. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sweet. But uh, white bass. I painted a white bass. This thing, I'm gonna go grab it. Yeah, grab it. it. It's this a, thing swims so good. Yeah, it's 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 one of his bigger multi-jointed swim baits that he, he painted up in a white bass. It's kind of it's a crazy looking bait, but it's another one of those ones that runs in fast riffles pretty well. It, it's definitely a heavier one for how compact it is. I mean, I guess you probably wouldn't consider it compact, yeah. but we don't we don't think that's like a medium sized big swim bait, you know. Jeez, oh Pete. <laughs> but, yeah, so I think Oh, it's so good. I think it's uh seven inches, two and a half ounces. And wow. you can you can run it deep, you can run it shallow. I think what he was getting at was that that pat that swimming uh, pattern that uh, they yeah, had. Like, yeah, oh my gosh, it's it's like watching a bluegill swim right at you. Yeah. It's, yeah, they, they swim great. That's awesome, man. I'd hate to lose one of these. As, as, as expensive uh, as these things yeah. are, man, I would really hate to snag one of these and lose it. That's what's kept me away from them for a while. Um, I know a lot of the ones you find at the store, like Live Target brands, are usually pretty expensive. Um, yeah, that's why we make them. You can lose, you can lose this. <laughs> oh yeah it's already beat up so you don't have to worry about getting scratches on it oh nice it's caught a bunch of fish do so you want me to throw this in gutters bill yeah yes absolutely you can fish it as long as you need to catch a fish and when you catch a fish on it you can keep it just to thank you for having <laughs> oh, 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 don't break it see yeah you don't have to worry about beating it up <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> Yeah, I'll take your challenge, man. I'll take this down to Gunnersville and I'll throw it around for a while and I'll see if I can't catch some bass on it. Don't break your rod. Yeah. Yeah, it's two and a half ounce. Wait. <laughs> uh, I got a medium heavy. I think I can throw this on. If if it's not rated for at least an what, ounce and a half? Yeah, just lob soft, it. Soft lob. Yeah, just lob yeah. it. Yeah, they fly anyway. They're so big. You can cast plenty far with a lob. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, oh, Pete's, man. That's pretty interesting. I'm kind of excited to see how I do, man, see what, what I can catch with this thing. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and we'll take a commercial break, uh, take us a little drink of beer, and uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. Sounds good to me. And here is a word from our sponsors, Venom Lures in Lancaster, Ohio. They're known for their great soft plastics and terminal tackle. They've been providing quality products from right here in Ohio since 1984. Mr. Dustin Carnes is the new owner and inventor of the DK rig. It's a weedless version of the Ned rig that's taken the fishing world by storm. You can check them out at VenomLures.com. Our next one is Strictly Sale. It's located on Kenwood Road in Blue Ash, Ohio. They sell Hobie, New Canoe, Phil Freeze, Three Waters, uh, Johnny Boats, and they've been providing high quality service to fishermen and watercraft enthusiasts since 1978. Reach out to Brian Tacey at 513-984-1907. Or you can check them out at strictlysaleinc.com. We have American Tackle, baby. The inventors of the microwave line guide system. Great company run by a great guy, Austin Todd. Definitely, definitely check them out. Their fishing rods are far superior. And then lastly, Fishing Real Fishing Company. They help make the logo of the Yak Legion. Great company. Check them out at realfishingco.com. All right, we're back. Hope you enjoyed uh, a word from our sponsors. <laughs> So, man, uh, you guys have a YouTube channel. It's uh, the Fry Brothers Outdoors, isn't it? Fry that... Brothers Fishing. Oh, Fry Brothers Fishing. All right, man. So, uh, how's that been going along? It's, it's been dragging its feet a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we, we're trying harder to get more videos out more frequently because that, that seems to be the key for, for good growth. But 
there, you know, the life happens, yeah. you run into limitations, but we'll, we'll get it together. We're, being we're consistent, it. being yeah. consistent is very important. Um, another thing too is, um, it's hard to get subscribers on YouTube. You know, it's hard to start off on YouTube because there's what, like 300 hours every minute or every day of, uh, of video being uploaded onto the YouTube. Yeah. So you're, you're competing with a lot of people, man. And it's very competitive. It's very hard to make money. Um, I just actually did an episode with a kayak DIY guy. And uh, he gave me a lot of good tips on how to make money through YouTube with uh, with no subscribers, starting off just making money. So uh, I suggest everybody check that episode out on Yak Legion. It's a pretty good episode. Um, but uh, what kind of videos do you do on your YouTube channel? So it's pretty much just all fishing related. Um, I want to get back into how to paint videos. Mm -hmm. I think so far I've done, I think just a shad and a trout. But since this is caught my PB bass, I want to do that. This is a nuclear trout. And this one I painted, I think, did I catch the muskie or the bass first? I think I caught the muskie, muskie first. first. So I painted this for the sheer fact of the, the spillway I was fishing is notoriously muddy. So mm. I did that with the sole idea of like, I need a muddy water special lure. That's it. So, uh, it's a lot of lakes in Ohio that are very muddy. Yeah. <laughs> so I figured what, sh that. what shows up better than white and chartreuse and muddy water? And yeah. Black and you have a silhouette. Yeah, and his painting videos went over pretty well. They, they got views pretty quick there for a good while before they tapered off. But an another one of our goals for the YouTube channel is uh, just more so my personal one is to get to the point where I carved this one. but. To where I could carve really nice baits and then send them up to him to get you know those perfect paint jobs that he's pretty well mastered. I, mean, I can't I can't paint really crap, but yeah. I can carve lures. And, uh, but we're not really at the point where I mean we fish with them, yeah. but we can't mass produce them just yet or anything like that. I don't know if we ever will, but I'd like to show that just like the whole story of us growing is. As anglers and the processes we go, th go through with like lure making and lure painting and like w I've thought about getting into custom jigs and custom yeah. spinner baits and stuff like that and because that's just like all the you know DIY part of it and then just as just as well as telling the story of like you know how we started as you know any other kid in Ohio to mm -hmm. like starting to fish tournaments and uh you know starting to win tournaments and then um you know i had to take this year off so we're kind of skip that part but like yeah. I, you know we're gonna get back into it um i'll try to convince him to get into tournaments but they're I, a lot of fun a good kayak yeah he's yeah. Uh, he's always running all <laughs> over the, the yeah, country i and travel he, a lot so it's it's hard to do hard to lock yeah. him down he's in alaska then he's in arizona then back here for a little while well the in-person events are so much fun especially yeah. the ones you camp at those are my favorite to do because usually all of us are at the campground the night before and we're you know we're, we're tying one on and not just tying on lures man <laughs> we usually do get a, get a few booze yeah. man sitting around the campfire just talking fishing man and uh the brotherhood of, of kayak fishing is what's really really um caused my obsession with kayaking man it's what i love the most about the sport and um yeah, that's how i met you i mean yeah. you just randomly i i knew justin and uh yeah. Justin Marshall and you were you were friends with him before yeah. right and then I'm, we met where was that Caesar's Creek oh maybe? Caesar's Creek yeah we were fishing um, the tailwaters or the headwaters the water comes in the Caesar's Creek. yeah the actual creek part yeah. of it yeah we need to go back up there and take these up here and chase we them didn't have there. a good day I don't think any of us caught a fish I that caught, day I caught two right there at the end all the way up that creek remember I, right under that bridge big yeah. log jam I caught yeah. like one eight inch bass maybe two yeah it wasn't nothing big yeah, I don't was, think that was, was that was a rough day very hot yeah, and yeah. sunny and you see the guys on the bass boats at back air with the shit throwing them big musculars i mean yeah, some yeah. of the musculars they make these things look small man i've seen some yeah. people throw some huge stuff for musky um i wonder what kind of bass them guys catch you know you know every once in a while you know oh, they one gotta, of the guys yeah. got to catch a monster on one of them big musculars oh, i'm sure i know i don't know if i have it with me i made a muscular and i keep thinking like if i can get in a kayak that this bait won't drag me in 
I'm gonna go full send for large mouth with it. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I got it. This thing's, it makes those look small, and it's not even. Oh wow! It's not even really musky size. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they get crazy 16 inch baits, and I have, I definitely haven't caught any bass on 16 inch baits, but you know these, these, you know six, seven, eight, nine, even up to 10 inch swim baits, we're we're catching fish in Ohio with them. I blows my mind, man. Using these big things. And people talk about using yeah. smaller stuff. Holy moly, look at that thing. Yeah, that was my attempt at a muscle lure. And uh I get some credit. I think I drew that blank. Yeah. Yeah, we made that here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then I just took some uh the scales are like just something you can buy at Cabela's, it's just a sticker. So you put black underneath of it, because yeah. in between the scales is just clear. Mm. And that was, that was like it. Put the sticker on there, paint the bottom silver to match it, paint the top gold, mm. black, put a shad dot on there, and now you just have a crazy holographic shad that and we, should get hit. You made that not even that long ago, and we, you know, there's, there's been quick improvements. Like, we learned to like see the bottom, how it's not perfect, and then this one's gotten to be pretty nice and flush to where when yeah. that's painted, you're barely going to see those seams. So. We keep improving. It's just, it's a slow process, you know. Making lures is slow. If you want it to be good, yeah. Don't but, use wood filler. That's what's yeah, we the bottom on that. <laughs> yeah, we try to use wood filler. That was not good. We try to use polyurethane. Also, not good. Those oh wow. Good. We learned a lot from uh, Marlon Bates. Yeah. If, if you ever, if you if you don't follow him, have any interest in lure making or even just purely for entertainment, Marlon Bates is. Yeah. Man, that kid can make some lures. Next wow. level. In my opinion, that yeah. is the next level lure maker. He's just, it's just good. Yeah. Like, I think he, I think in one of his videos he said he's only been doing it five or six years, which is how long I've been painting. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah, we'll, we'll get there someday. He's a weird little dude. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's, he's pro. It's, wow. It's so good. So what kind of equipment, man? So what rod? And real combo, are you using to throw some some of these big lures, man? Uh, well, you grab, grab a couple. Of them. You use something too light, you're liable to break your rod. With and, one of yeah, these. And I definitely have. So especially like you can't cast those giant lures nearly like you can't you know bring them over your head and whip them, anything yeah. around. You're gonna snap tips left and right, and you got to learn how to cast all different. Like even even down to the spool, like um, you know if you guys are got your magnetism backed off and your brakes way low like just above zero or something like that like yeah. you could burn your thumb because those things have so much momentum it'll by the end of the day you, your thumb will be raw because uh, yeah. they're, they're so heavy and they spool out lines yeah. so fast the day i wow. beat the crap out of that big one that i made i had electric tape on my thumb mm -hmm. because it just kept burning it wow. I'm, I'm running 40 pound braid on a is this a 7-eleven ukuma guide select a uh, it's rated for one to six ounces. That's an awesome rod. And that's, wow. yeah, I, I love this. It's basically a giant crankbait rod. Yeah. That's, that's really it, because I throw primarily treble hook baits. I, I have the same rod, and I'll, I'll stick them with the Huddleston with the, you know, the single hook yeah. on that rod, too. And the, the bend in that thing is just like, when you set the hook, it's just like, it's so satisfying to, it, it just feels, you know, like there's nothing that can stop you on that thing. like. It's got the really nice bend just all the way. Like, it'll even bend down below those, those last eyelets there. I think wow. My, I think my muskie had this rod bent down to here. Like, Jeez, oh, please. And so I, I, we we both thing. like that play that you get, you know, yeah. when, on those moderate rods. And yeah. It yeah. just seems to keep fish just pinned, having this, this nice, not like wet noodles or anything, but like a good crankbait <laughs> rod, good moderate yeah. rod. Uh, use a BB2, right? Yeah, I have a, a lose BB2 saltwater reel that I throw on mine, and it, it's dogged out, man. It's it's uh, been in the uh, salt a bunch. It's, uh, it's tried to fight, you know, just some of the biggest fish you can. I I brought it up to Michigan a while ago, and I caught I don't know, 15, 20 king salmon that were all ranged from like anywhere from 12 to probably 22 pounds, and. I think it's just had the tar beat out of it, but I've actually been considering going like a, what's a Rob War. He goes with the, the big, uh, big spinning reels and the beefier rods. 
I've been been thinking about getting into that just just solely for these guys, just for the big paddle tails, not not the glide baits. I I got to keep those on my bait casters, but these yeah. these are still like I know this is big, but it's, it's this is still a finesse style bait for me, and you could just absolutely bomb these things on like a eight foot, eight and a half foot uh, spinning rod. Yeah, I, and they just fly. I think I went a little overkill with my reel for what I throw. Yeah, the um, Citrix is a monster. Yeah, got the Okuma Citrix, and its sweet spot is like two to four ounces. Um, and this is like this is a, a high float. It's, it floats real quick. It floats real high in the water. Like almost half this bait's out of the water, and that thing will backlash. Cause it's like no matter how much I don't, I don't know if I ever let you use that reel, but no matter how much I tweak it for something light, you have to put so much force into it mm -hmm. that it just doesn't want to cast anything light. Like I could probably use that, maybe not the rod, but I could probably use that reel with the depth 250, no problem. Those yeah. Are, some big baits. Yeah, oh yeah, they makes, are. Yeah, that makes my stuff look small. Wow. Mm -hmm. I got a Denali back there. It's, it's rated for eight to twelve ounces. So those are, you know, this. You're talking throwing stuff like this, this size, and even bigger for, uh, for that rod. And it's 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 a bit more wow. of a stiff action than uh, the moderates that we were talking about earlier. But mm -hmm. those are those are our that's our big gear. And then yeah. all the other stuff, man. We're just like anybody else. Like, you know, we love Shimano. They're great because they have you know bomber stuff and last forever and they're you know all their parts are replaceable but we've got we've ran through all the brands lose and 13 fishing and mm. you know, anybody we can get our hands on but i'm not i'm not a rod snob i don't i appreciate that it works so. yeah i i don't know you know we buy stuff on sale when we can get it and mm. You know, people used to, people have caught plenty of fish with sticks in a string. So oh that's yeah. What I like to remind myself the old cane poles. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm looking at a metanium DC on tackle warehouse and it's like six hundred dollars or whatever, I'm like, well, yeah, maybe my maybe my low end rods will work just fine. But, yeah. Uh, that's like I just bought I, I broke my second rod this year. Hopefully, I'm not gonna break a second reel this year. I just broke my third rod. Never mind, I forgot to snap the tip off that one. But uh, I had reels just sitting around and I was walking through Walmart, I wanted some paddle tails and uh, I just looked over and there's this halo rod and it's like marked down from $40 to 13 bucks because they're going to close out and I was like, what's $13 for a season? Like, yeah. Whatever, I'll get a better rod later, yeah. but I'm actually kind of impressed with that little rod. It's kind of weird to have it paired up with a $300 Revo rocket. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably put my speed spool on there, but... Yeah, and like yeah, you know, those tournament works. guys, the tournament guys that are out there all the time, just that's their whole life is fishing tournaments. Yeah. I understand why they want super, super light gear that they can cast and be super comfortable. But you know, we're, we're hit and miss with the tournaments, and we do fish long, long days when I'm, I'm miss with the tournaments. Yeah, <laughs> not into them so much, but. When we we do some fifteen hour days and you know our hands hurt and we're sore afterwards and oh, we're probably yeah. gonna get carpal tunnel and yeah maybe when we're older we can afford a bunch of G yeah. Lewis stuff and, you know fish yeah. that I know how it is man. I know how it is I work forty hours a week sometimes more I got a baby daughter two yep. years old that I take care of and I got chores at home I got grass to mow yep. uh, I know how it is man it, it can be hard to get fishing in. Oh uh, yeah, um, definitely. I'm I'm working forty hours a week, you know, full time climbing trees, and then on the weekends climbing trees some more for my business. It's it's a lot, so I'm trying to work out the balance, trying to get fishing back in there. Uh, I work forty hours a week, and I just fish. You just fish all the time. I just fish, and I paint lures. Nice. <laughs> That's it. That's my entire yeah. life. And if I'm not doing that, I'm in a different state, and I'm fishing and working and not painting lures. Like that's the only real deviation for me. Yeah. It's if I'm not out, I was talking to a brother in Florida. And he's like, well, yeah, at least you got to go fishing this week. It's like, yeah, not really. And I counted it up. Uh, I still went four days. And I was, was kind of like, oh, I didn't get to fish. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> don't get four days a weekend. Not anymore. No. I did for a long time, but. Yeah. Everything's so close to me now. Yeah, that's true. It's, that's the thing where we grew up, there's water everywhere. I mean, you, you can't walk half a mile in any direction and not hit. We grew up right by the Muskingum River. There's, yeah. I mean, 
the Mohicans near there, the Kokosing, the Tuscararis, the, the Little Wakatamica, um, Woodbury wow, Wildlife. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I mean, so much water near us. And the Skin River is huge and full of fish. And, and I'm a, I'll, I'll put it out there. I'm a true believer that there is a state record of AUP. Oh yeah, yeah I'm sure. I'm, I think that's positive. I think everybody's in agreement with that. That yeah. that's a strong possibility. It's a big bass out there. Yeah. I think it's 45 And when you minutes. talk about dragging your kayaks through the, the mud and the woods, yeah. that's AEP right there. Yeah, that's see, that's my bread and butter. I don't, I don't know that there's anybody that'll. I don't, maybe there is, but I will drag a kayak and just until my legs are completely smoked, mm -hmm. like just get it as far as I possibly can. That's definitely a place you gotta drag a kayak or wade or uh, a lot of float tubes are real popular out there. Yeah, you're gonna they deflate are. them and inflate them. Uh, I could see the the use of those things out there. Yeah, actually, I should mention that I was a, a belly boat guide out of AEP. That was my stomping grounds. I, I, really? That was uh, my job before this one. When did you do that? Uh, let's see. When did I start? Maybe 2014, uh, maybe 2015. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's around and, there. Risto Hawk in college. Yeah, yeah. I was at, well. I was in college. I was going to school and working quite a bit. I, it wasn't. It was less than 40 hours a week it was definitely over 40 hours a week with all the prep time because yeah. let me tell you prepping four belly boats the inflatable boats <laughs> and like because you're going you're going you know when you're guiding you're doing you're basically babysitting and you don't really get to fish that much you're doing a lot of prep work with the boats mm. sealing leaks all the time oh, but yeah. yeah i got to know a b like the back of my hand and I could, I could take you some places out there. Wow. Well, I'm about down, man. I yeah. love AP. Yeah, I've time. only been out there one time, and I camped out there like two uh, two nights. Yeah. We camped three days, and uh, we we couldn't even come close to covering all the ground out there. Yeah. I, I've worked out there for, what, two, two, two seasons two, or three? Yeah. yeah. Two seasons, I was, that was the only place I really guided, and wow. it was, uh, I still don't know all of it. I mean, I know yeah. a lot, but... It's a, it's just it's a big kind area. of desolate out there. You can some of the ponds are so deep and they're so crystal clear. Like uh, there's, I don't even know how deep this pond was. Probably sixty feet. It, it almost looked like it was only ten feet because the water was so crystal clear. But then you would drop a lure and you'd watch your lure fall and fall <laughs> and fall and fall and fall. <laughs> And it was like, holy crap, that's a lot deeper than what I thought it was, you know. Yeah, when we went out there, we didn't have electronics, but we could just drop something, and you could tell that was deep water. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great time. Let me know when you want to go. I'd, I'd love to make it back out there. Oh, yeah. I went in on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I was just swim bait the whole time, though, so. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good that's, place to swim bait. Yeah, that's, I want, I want to stay record, so. Well, that yeah. one guy swim bait, he's one of the few guys that I know swim baits quite a bit that rob whitaker is that his last name i don't remember um i remember seeing a lot of facebook posts of him throwing bigger bluegill like kind of like those ones mm -hmm. I, know, I know there's 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 other swim baiters out there definitely an aap yeah. I, I see posts of them they're becoming more popular and popular that's for sure especially these big monstrous things yeah it's, yeah, from what I know of them, they were like people have been throwing them since the seventies or something out out west. But yeah, it's it's really caught in caught in fire in the last what five six years maybe. Like, I don't know. I don't I mean, that's I just started, what I know I about. I started throwing them until probably three years ago. Right, when but, it's like we're gonna catch ten pounders, and then we did. <laughs> <laughs> Now yeah, like, both ends caught a ten pounder apiece. So yeah, we're else. racing for teeners now. Yeah. First yeah. one to thirteen. <laughs> All, all, all the state records, what, 13? I think it's 13, uh, 13. Yeah, 13. Yeah, 13. Or something like that. Yeah. I know it's real close to there. But, but I mean, I, my, my 10, man, this looks small. Man, this wow. looks so small. It wasn't even as long as its head. Like, wow. It's, it's amazing it didn't inhale the bait completely. Yeah, I got to watch it too. It was like, that thing got hit by a 10-ton 10, 10 hammer. It oh, was, yeah. It was something. Yeah, and, it was, and it was cold weather, so like, it didn't bite as hard. Yeah. I think in the video, I think it's Midwest. What was it? Midwest, Midwest Monster or something? Yeah, Midwest Monster. And like I cast it out and said the one big aggressive bass comment set the hook. And I started laughing because I think I got like a five pounder. And I don't really, you know, five pounders like, oh, cool. Yeah. I forget to take pictures of five pounders. Yeah. Uh, but I started laughing because like five hours in, I think I caught a five pounder. I'm all excited. And then you hear me just go like, Oh my god. Oh my god. And I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, 
kind of turned into panic mode because I didn't have net. And I'm sitting here like thinking, what's ha- like, what am I going to do? How am I going to land this? Did you land that this? Back? No, I grabbed it. You did, didn't you? I grabbed it. I was freaking out. And I, was just I had like, my net and I just sat there like an idiot. <laughs> I'm like looking right at it. Just like, oh, oh, oh cool. look at that fish. <laughs> didn't do anything about it. Yeah, and I was, I mean, you've seen it. I've hooked into fives and I really, mm. I don't. I'm just like, oh, yeah, nice. Like, give a little chuckle. It's on the same uh, time. I, I still get excited, but not like a. Oh, anytime you catch a five brown bass, it's exciting. Yeah, I still, I, I still get really excited. We're just, we have a little, we've been told by our friends anyway that we don't show enough excitement on our U, our YouTube channel. Like, we don't get that excited. Even when we catch yeah. big fish, we're like, yeah, like that was good, but. There's yeah. people on there that, you know, are catching two pound bass and the whole time they're reeling it in, they're just screaming. Yeah. And it's a giant, yeah. it's a giant, just, it's a giant. It's a dink. <laughs> yeah, they're like, well, yeah, you know, probably could have been a giant. <laughs> I got a video on YouTube under Zach Carell Outdoors and it's me catching a 14 inch bluegill and I got excited for that, man. 14 inch bluegill, yeah. Be, I mean, I'd be real pumped about that. That's yeah. That's big. Yeah, I mean, bluegills don't get huge in Ohio. I mean, 14, 15 inches are big in yeah. the state. Uh, the biggest one I've heard ever caught in this state, I think it went like 16 or 17 inches. And that's a big crappie that's, for Ohio, yes. man. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen one that big, but that's for sure. Yeah. I've, I've so, so something I ask all my guests. And uh, we go into fake crazy fishing stories, man. Something that could either be tragic, something funny. Uh, something dangerous, man. You guys have any good fishing stories you want to share? We well, got something up our sleeves, right? I got a couple. They're not like super amazing or anything, but it's it's the grind paying off with some baits and mm-hmm. lures I've given away to other people that have worked out really well. Uh, that one that I cut the muskie on, you know, like I said, I did it for muddy water specifically. And, yeah. Uh, you know, the internet hates that bait. It's the trout lighter, guys. It's the 7 inch trout lighter. The internet despises that bait for some reason, which, like I said before, it works for me. Uh, catches fish. So I was probably three hours into fishing. I walk by this guy and I get the typical, like, oh, what are you doing? Fishing for musky? It's like, no, I'm going after saw guy. Blew his mind. He started talking about, like, oh, you're going to catch a muskie on that thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, maybe. And uh, I didn't really think of it at all because <laughs> I had never, I hadn't had a muskie follow that I was aware of since I went to Canada in 07. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went 50 yards downstream, started raining. I was like, all right, I'm just going to make a couple more casts. And water's high, water's muddy. And I'm just running right down the bank and meet you away. Like, I just paused for a half a second. I don't know why. And then I went to pick it up out of the water and I saw its mouth just come up and swipe that bait and just hammered it. It started peeling drag. And, like, I never hooked a muskie. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know anything about the water downstream of me. I didn't know if there were stumps, if there's logs. It's the end of Wills Creek. Like, we never fished down there. Uh, so I yelled at the guy that just asked if I was musky fished, and I, I yelled for a net. And I told him, I was like, yo, I got a musky. And uh, <laughs> he yells back like a musky, like he was questioning it. And it's like, yeah. And he just starts, you see him fumbling around because I'm like panicking looking back. I had my drag set super tight because of uh, watching people on YouTube. So I'm big fishermen really tighten their drags real, real tight. And uh, so they can get control of the fish and you wrench it in. It's not mm-hmm. really going for the fight. It's going for the trophy. You hook it, you get it in the boat. Uh, so I was trying that approach. And I, you got I, taken when, school. I, when I hooked that muskie, I thought it was going to be, but I, I panicked and I hit my button. And so I was like thumbing this muskie, like I was free spooling and I'm thumbing it to slow it down. Mm. Uh, I don't know how long the bite took. Felt like it took forever because I had a full blown adrenaline rush and I didn't know what's doing. And mm. like he came up and he, this was scariest net job i've ever had in my life this is a you know this is a 42 43 inch muskie and he swipes from behind it like tail first oh no you don't scoop tail first yeah uh so he swipes behind it and like it hits the fish and it freaks out i'm sitting here like oh no what did i just do like 
Who just dice assassin? Yeah. <laughs> and you can see, like, you know, he got three points on his treble hook. I've got five of them in this fish's mouth. And he's like, we got one treble exposed and it's hooked real good. I'm just going to hook it and pull it up on the bank. And I'm like, uh, uh. And he just goes, and he yanks it up on the rocks. And I'm sitting here like, what just happened? <laughs> and like, we get pictures and. and you know how you feel like, when you catch something that big? Yeah. Like, you feel like, I shake like I was just in a car wreck, man. I get oh. so excited when I catch something that big. Yeah, it wow. was, it was amazing. And, uh, you know, he took pictures for me and like. That bait was so tangled up in the net. He's like, you know what, man? Just keep the head of that net. But that's actually not the bait. That's a replica of the bait. Like I have that other one. It's it's retired. That's my first musky bait. <laughs> and uh, he let me keep the head of the net, so I can just hang up the net with the bait in it. And it's like, this is your musky trophy. Since you mm. let it go, uh, yeah. So I can't keep a musky. I just can't. And uh, yeah, I think I called you. As soon as I got service, I'm like, guess what I just did? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's Anytime cool? either one of us, any of the brothers, there's there's four of us. Oh, wow. And uh, we have a sister, too. And But, yeah, usually a, a big big picture or a fish, picture of a big fish and something along the lines of suck it, nerd. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's right out there. Yeah, I don't think I can top that story right off the top of my head we might have to wait till next episode for oh, that one I'm, I'm losing battery steam over there but yeah i got a, i got another quick one that i can cover for yours yeah yeah, yeah go, go, ahead. go ahead and take mine and one of my old teachers got a hold of me my old seventh grade teacher oh this is got a hold story. of me and uh she had she had tagged multiple kids that i don't know, I don't know and my facebook post of like you know i i just broke my my drum personal best Fish Wall Street Dam again. And uh, I went from like an eight pounder to a 15 3, like a Lake Erie size drum. Yeah. And uh, she tags these kids in it, and I, I just finally asked, like, so what are these guys like the next generation of fishermen or something? Like, I wanted to know. And uh, she said, yeah, and my son. I was like, well, cool, maybe I can hook him up with some baits. So I uh, ended up giving her son and her husband, I think I gave him like seven baits to start out with. And her son, Chris, didn't even have the baits a week, and he broke his PB with, like, a five-pounder. Like, wow. a little, little lipless crawl that I painted him. Not even a week, and he just hammered one. So he ripped it right out of the grass, got hung up, ripped it out, and just smashed. Wow. So it, was, it was super cool. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Always, it's, that's always cool to get the kids involved. Well, I appreciate, appreciate you guys coming on the show. Um, <clears throat> do you have any pro staffs or uh, are you on any teams or do you have any shout outs you want to give? Uh, no pro staff, no teams. But, uh, <laughs> we're, we're getting there. Yeah. We're getting there. Maybe next year. Can't sponsor yeah, anybody, yeah. but everybody that watches our YouTube channel, everybody that watches your channel. Yeah, uh, the only shout outs I have is just our subscribers. Yeah, yeah. if that's where you're going. Yeah, pretty much. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Yeah, anybody that watches our videos. Well, it goes for, for me, too, man. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> I appreciate you guys coming on the show, man. Yeah, well, thanks for coming out. Fun, man. Yeah, we appreciate it. Thanks Sit for back us. and talking fishing. Yeah. It's a good time, man. It's always a good time. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Till next time, tight lines. <laughs>